Hey everybody, it's Debbie O'Neill of Scrap Me Quick Designs and today I'm going to talk about how to create scrapbook layouts using Design Space. So some of you have been scrapbooking for a while and you may use Design Space already. Uh, hopefully I'll still share a few tips with you that I do that'll help you. And then those some of you are new at doing this and you're intrigued by maybe creating some scrapbook pages using Design Space. So I'm going to start with the basics of creating uh, scrapbook pages. So forgive me if you already know this, but I'm just going to kind of talk in general terms. You're going to watch me create a scrapbook page in Design Space. The first thing is when you're creating scrapbook layouts, you need to start by gathering your photos and selecting which ones you're going to be using. It could be about an event like a birthday party or a trip to the park, or it could be an everyday thing, maybe your favorite a coffee spot or you know maybe it's about family or maybe it's about holidays or whatever but you want to go through and pull some pictures that you're going to want to use on your scrapbook layout so then you also want to think about the sizes of those photos and you don't want to fall in the hat into the trap of picking way too many photos okay you want to identify maybe a focal point photo is what I like to call it which is kind of like your key element something that is really going to tell the story um, about what your scrapbook layout is about okay so if it's a birthday party it's obviously going to be a picture of the birthday person right if it's in if it's a holiday maybe it's a picture of your holiday tree or the meal or something um, and then the other pictures that you put on that page well, I call those supporting photos so the supporting photos are going to be pictures that um, continue to tell the story about that event or story that you're trying to put on your scrapbook page okay so you don't have to have every photo on your page but once you kind of figure out which photos are the best from that bunch um, then you want to think about what size you want those photos to be okay now we're going to be working on a 12 by 12 double page layout uh, 12 by 12 is the traditional scrapbook layout size uh, of course you know some people do eight by eights or eight and a half by elevens it depends upon what you're using but i'm going to show you how i make 12 by 12 pages and then you can adapt those same techniques i'm going to show you just using um, the sizing appropriate for the scrapbook size that you want to use okay since we're working with uh, 12 by 12s I may make my focal point photo may be a little bit larger than my supporting photos all right so we're going to talk about that in a minute so once you figure out which photos you're going to use this is starting to help you think about what you want that scrapbook page to be about then you want to pick a theme okay so that theme is you know something to do with what your photos are about and you you know is it about a you know a bicycle race or is it about a birthday or is it about your garden or whatever and so you want to think about what is your theme for that layout because that's going to help you kind of figure out what colors you want to use what elements you may want to use and then you're going to create the base layout uh, design for your project so once you got a feel for you know what theme you're going for what your pictures look like and then kind of start playing around with how those pictures are going to go on your layout then you can start thinking about what what about my layout title and what decorative elements do i want to use to continue to tell the story of what happened for that event that you're scrapbooking about okay so those are just kind of the key principles of when you're sitting down ready to start creating a scrapbook page so we're going you're going to watch me create a scrapbook page now I um, have a granddaughter who just turned seven and she had we have some adorable pictures from her seventh birthday party so I'm gonna do a layout from using photos from her seventh birthday all right so the very first thing I do is when I go into design space I am going to come over here into shapes and I'm gonna pick a square okay so the square is gonna come up and of course it's gonna be at the top there and I want to size this square to 12 by 12 okay 
Now, I told you earlier, we're gonna make a 12 by 12 scrapbook layout, and we're also going to make it a double page layout. So you wanna create two of these. So I'm gonna come over here to my layers panel and just duplicate it. Now, thing I wanna point out here is, so when you have a scrapbook page, 12 by 12 double page layout means that you're making a layout across two pages, basically. You could certainly just make one 12 by 12. Sometimes maybe you only have a couple of photos that you wanna put down for that event, and you can just make one page if you prefer. We're gonna go with two for right now. Um, all right, so these are gonna be my background pages, okay? I just put them on in as black for right now, but I then will be able to use the color selector in Design Space to help me figure out what my final pieces are when I go to actually pull my materials to create my cart, to create my layout, okay? So we've got 12 by 12. Now, Cricut does not cut out 12 by 12, right? It, you're limited to 11 and a half by 11 and a half. Um, size as far as working with 12 by 12 okay so if you're using a 12 by 12 mat you can cut 11 and a half by 11 and a half so when you go to cut your layout out you can still have the 12 by 12 I use that as a guideline this is going to be the two sheets of cardstock that I'm going to use as my background that I'm going to put all my page elements on all right but this you are not going to cut in design space because of course it's going to be too big and you're going to get that error message so you'll just turn off the background to background pieces when you go to cut and so once i have my two 12 by 12s up here then i want to think about well what do i want you know what am i going to what do i want as far as um, maybe a design element so i really like to use a cardstock base and then I like to use some pattern paper in kind of a lighter pattern. So what I'm going to do is to create that layer that's going to be put on top of the next layer. I'm going to do 11 and a half by 11 and a half. Okay. And then I'm going to color this one just so that we know that it's going to be, I'm just going to pick this light yellow color here and I'm going to want two of these. Okay, because I have two pages I'm working on. Okay, so once I get those two pages, so I have 11 and a half by 11 and a half. But look at this, because I'm making a, if I'm just making a single page, then this works fine, okay? But I'm making a double page layout. When I make a double page layout, I'm going to want that to move over because when I put this in my book, I want it to look like one seamless image like this. Okay, so I'm going to want to pull this pattern. Let's say I'm, I'm going to use like a light toned, uh, tone on tone pattern paper for this layer. And um, so I don't want the border to be completely around both sides because this is this layout needs to have one cohesive look. That's the best way to describe it. Okay, so I need to adjust my sizes slightly so that when these are in my book and I have these two pieces of pattern paper and the two pieces of cardstock in my book, it's going to create the right size border. See, right now I have more um, showing on the left hand side and the right hand side that I do have showing around. So then what I do is I just adjust the sizing of these two lighter pieces. And I'm gonna come in and I'm gonna make those 11 and a half by 11 instead of 11 and a half. I'm gonna do that same thing for the other side because remember we're working with two pages. Now when we're working with this, I can move this down so that it's going to make it look like the border of the cardstock showing is even all the way around. And I'll show you what that means. Okay, so now if I had these two pages in a book and I opened it up, it would look like one cohesive layout because I've resized these inside pieces. That's where a lot of people get stuck is they don't think about that when you're gonna make a double page layout and put it in your book, you want it to you know, to look similar when you get it in the, in the book, okay? So that's the first thing I do is I create that. Now I did wanna point out to you guys that down here in the lower left corner of your screen, if you haven't used this before, there is a zoom in design space. So if you, it's, it automatically defaults to 100%, but I always move mine down to 75% so that I can have the double page layout all on one screen on my laptop here. 
um, so that I can see it all at one time. So I've already adjusted mine to 75%, but I wanted to mention that. Okay, so now I've got a cardstock base and I have some pattern, light pattern paper I'm gonna use for the next layer. Now I wanna think about my pictures that I wanna do. So I'm gonna go in here, back into shapes, and I know that for my focal point picture, I want to, I'm going to do a five by seven photo. Okay. This is a, this is a birthday layout. And so I want to make sure that that birthday person gets special attention in this layout, right? So I'm going to make this five, a five by seven photo. Now, what I do is that I take all of those pieces that are going to represent my photos and I just make them white. Okay. Then that way it gives me a good feel for when I go to start laying out my design, I have all of these and I know that those represent my photos. Okay. I know I'm going to put a five by seven photo on here and I know that I pulled two four by six photos that um, are going to help me tell my supporting photos are going to help me tell the story by six photos that I want to use. So I'm going to change this to six by four and I'm going to make these white. And I know I have a couple of these. Okay, so I'm going to duplicate these. Now, the photos, when I pull them, I know that those are landscape, which means that they're horizontal when you look at them. And I know that my photo that I want to use as my focal point photo is more of a vertical photo. Okay, so um, when I start creating my designs in Design Space, I size these white squares to represent my photos so it helps me when I go to do my layout design, okay? And then I know I have one other photo I want to use, but I don't need a whole 4x6 for this. I'm going to, the size of it looks like it should be a 4x4, four four. so then I'm going to create one that's 4x4. Four four. Now, of course, you can make these any size that you want. Um, and then, you know, depending upon the photos that you're using, but you want to just think about that. So I'm just walking you through my design process. Um, and, uh, these are going to be white. I know cause that's going to be a photo. Okay. And then I want to start thinking about, so these just kind of fall into place here. Now I could certainly change these around move them around however I want. But as I start laying this out, I start getting a feel for what's going to fit on the page and have a good flow. Okay. Now I know that I want a journaling spot for my photo, for my layout, because I want to write something about this special birthday party that we had for Giselle. Okay. So I decide that I just want to duplicate this one. And this is going to be a journaling block on my layout where I can either handwrite it, what I want to say on there, or I can use the Cricut pens and I can use the text feature and write onto this. Okay. So it just depends upon what you want. I personally like to have handwriting on my scrapbook pages. And so I, I always handwrite my journaling. All right. So now I've got a journaling spot here and I've got a place for three photos and I have my focal point photo. Okay. I typically put my focal point photo on the left hand page and then my supporting photos are to on the right hand page. The reason why I do that is when you open up the book and you look at it, we read left to right. Correct. So when people are looking, they're like, oh, wow, look, it's Giselle's birthday. Oh, they look at the next, the pa next page to it. Oh, that's all the fun stuff that they did at her party. So it all has a flow to it. Okay. Then once you have kind of a feel for, um, you know, what you want to put, the number of photos that you want to have, the size that they are, then you're going to be able to then start looking at, well, what do I want to use for my theme? Because this party had a theme and this theme was rainbows and hearts. Okay. So for Giselle's party, but you know, your, your theme may be something completely different, of course. So you want to think about your theme and then you also want to start thinking about what could you use for the title. Okay. So this is a birthday page. So we're going to talk about where do you go when you want to start looking for a title in design space? So I'm going to go over to images and what I want to do is I can certainly search for images and I can type in happy birthday. 
okay and then I can come over here and do a search so you can search for your theme that you picked for your for your layout okay and it's going to come up with all kinds of things tons and tons and tons and tons of stuff now the thing I want to point out to you is that in design space, if you type in happy birthday, you're not always going to get just happy birthday. You're going to get anything that has the word happy and anything that has the word birthday. So there's a lot of stuff you have to filter through to get to what you want. Um, but it may be worth it because sometimes you're not sure what, what you want to use on your page and you want to see some different ideas. This is a great way to do that. But what I prefer to do is Cricut has categories. So I want to go, give it a second. Okay. So I want to go into categories. And when I go into categories, they already have things kind of split up into themes. So you could pick the birthday theme or you can pick, pick arts and entertainment or uh, Christmas or fall or there's a whole bunch of different themes in here where they've already kind of helped group some of these for you and you can come over here and pick something so I'm going to go into birthdays because now this is definitely all the images and uh, words that Cricut has in design space that are part of birthdays okay so it kind of helps filter those for you and then, you know, so you can scroll through this and there's a lot of images on here, okay? So it may take you a while, but it may give you some good ideas or prompts for what you could put on your page. Now, you can also come over here to the filter over here and you can filter. And then down here, because I want to think about a title for my page, I want to come down here and I'm going to pick phrases, okay? So it's going to come up with phrases. And then you can further filter them um, whether or not they're whether they're not uh, if they're free images or Cricut access images or they're uh, from cartridges that you purchased or image sets that you purchased or whatever you can do that right now I just have it on everything that is consider a phrase for birthdays okay so then I would scroll through and I would see almost always you're going to find a prompt some type of a title or a phrase that you could use as a title for your scrapbook page okay so this is using design space and the images in design space now you can certainly go in and you can create your own title using text okay and create your own custom title that way but a lot of times it's really fun to go in and look and see because Cricut has you know 75,000 images now in design space and it's awfully fun to go in and discover new things now when I was scrolling through this before the video I found this one that I absolutely loved because I didn't want to just do a birthday page that says happy birthday Giselle that seemed kind of boring you're in birthday so you're in birthday you can always come over here and you can add you can do a further search here So it says search in birthday and I can type in, let's say, because it's her seventh birthday, I'm going to type in seven and see if there's anything that comes up for sevens, okay? So there's this one It says, I make seven look good. I thought that was a really cute title to use for my page. Insert this image. So here's an image that I can use. Now this is something that, um, you know, could be used on a, with using... Uh, heat transfer vinyl and make a shirt with it or whatever but we're going to use it as a title for our page okay so so this is kind of when i start the basics of working on my layout i want to know kind of what is my title going to be because that helps me then think about what else i want to use for my images so with my focal point photo I always like to create a mat behind my photo to give that photo more presence on the page. So I'm going to duplicate my five by seven. Okay. And I want to go in and I want to increase the dimensions to have a little bit of it peeking out behind when I go to do this. And Giselle's favorite color is purple right now, so I'm going to change that background to purple. Okay, and I just do this as a visual aid, of course, um, and then I'll go into my, my stash of supplies and I'll find a purple that I like. Okay, but you can start thinking about 
Okay, so this purple will be cut out of cardstock, and then my photo is going to go on top of it. That's what the white represents. Okay, and then uh, let's see. So Giselle's theme for her birthday party was rainbows and hearts. So I want to do a search, an image search for rainbows. I'm going to go back into images, and I'm going to search for rainbow. Okay, so you can think of different you know, items that you want to use on your scrapbook page to help you further the story that you're trying to tell with your scrapbook page. So um, I'm looking at this and I'm thinking, oh my gosh, I really love this heart arrow. So I'm going to click on that one. And usually I'll go through and as I find stuff, I'll pick two or three different things that I like. I use this on her, on her birthday party invitation. So I'm going to put that on there because I think that'll be good. And so I pick, you know, two or three images or things that are going to help me further tell the story with the theme which was rainbows and hearts okay so we've got rainbows and hearts and it'll take a second for these to come in okay so we've got this and we've got this and we have this okay so as i start looking at this i'm thinking oh my gosh this is super cute and i can take this and make it bigger, play with it a little bit, size it. And what I'm going to do is when I cut this out, I'm going to put it over the photo. Okay, so I'm going to put you some foam tape and have it stand out a little bit above the photo, just as a cute little decorative element that it looks like these um, hearts are kind of holding up the rainbow and the hearts are kind of holding up the the focal point photo okay okay so you on your focal point photo you always want to add some kind of an element or something next to it that draws your eye to that photo besides just the size of it okay so you want to add something that that is part of the theme something that helps further tell the story okay and then so i've got that little heart up there it looks super cute and then i like this but I think I'm going to make this my decorative element when I go to use, when I go to create my little um, journaling block. Oops. There we go. Okay. So I've got this and it's going to be really cute and will be here and it's further going to continue my story that I'm telling about the rainbow party. Okay. And hearts. And then, so this will go on the bottom of my journaling block that I created, and then I'll have time, a place up here to write, okay? So that's what that's going to be about. And then this piece here, I really like the fact that it was already a rainbow, but I like the fact that I could use it as a background, okay? So I'm going to move these out of the way. I'm going to move the, picture, the photos out of the way real quick. And this is just how my brain works when I see things, okay? I know some of y'all, this may not make sense to you, but I'm thinking instead of trying to find, sometimes it's really hard to find a pattern paper that's exactly what you want, but it's really cool to just create what you want using cardstock because you can always find the different colors of cardstock. So I'm going to take this piece and I'm going to size it so it's going to be another layered image on the back of, of the photos so it'll be like a giant photo mat for those other photos that I'm adding that are my supporting photos okay so this size I'm gonna make this I think 11 by 10 and a half and I'll show you why I came to that conclusion one I always want to make sure that I am sticking within my um, sizing for cutting it on my Cricut mat because I don't want to make any extra work for myself and I could certainly go in and I could change some things so that um, so that I could use a paper trimmer if I wanted but why are we going to do that we want to use design space so let me just make sure what size okay so 11 by 10 and a half okay then I'm going to start adding my photos back on there Okay, so I've got this over here. And 
and I guess I should mention do you guys know that you can um, when you when you put your cursor on uh, an image and you right click with your mouse that then you can have this this pop out comes up so that I can just say send to front so it puts it on top of whatever the background image is I find this to be very helpful when I'm trying to do some design work it went away for a while and I begged Cricut to bring it back I was so happy when they did okay so I'm also going to then add my little element here okay so you can start seeing how my story is coming together now right so I have my focal point photo I have my supporting photos I have a journaling spot I have a title for my page and I have some decorative elements all right so the next thing that I do I'm going to size this because I really want this to stand out and be super cute as a title on my page so once I kind of have my basic layout and I have my title and I have some decorative elements and so forth then I want to start thinking about what materials am I going to pull to actually create my scrapbook page okay so what cardstock I'm going to use what colors what pattern paper I may want to use that type of thing so then I can start going through and pulling materials that I want to uh, use for my layout all right so I find going over to color sync very helpful because the images that come in in design space are going to come in the colors that the designer when they created that image and put it in design space they've colored it somehow right but I want them to match what I'm working on so that it makes it easier when I go to pull my materials so I know if I need two sheets of red cardstock or I need you know one sheet of silver and three sheets of white or whatever I need this helps me be able to create a better flow when I go to cut everything out and then also helps me when visually you'll see here in a minute when we start doing this how does my layout going to look and pull together visually in design space so that then I know what it's going to look like when I create it okay so I go over here to color sync and of course the white ones we're going to leave the way they are um, the silver I know that um, this the little hearts here I'm going to cut those out of silver um, glitter paper or actually it's the Cricut sparkle paper is what I'm going to use for that and I know that I want to create the little sparkle a little sparkle over here a little sparkle over here and a little sparkle down here so I want to find the little heart background and I want to move this up and just drag it up to the silver okay all right so now you start seeing the changes on the on this I also want to take these little elements that go here where the um, splotches are next to the seven and so forth and I know that I want those to be where are they I want those to be the silver the sparkly stuff too Okay, so you start seeing them change on your layout and I know that the I make I want this to be red so I'm going to go color sync this into the red zone okay and I'm gonna make this red now I also want to make sure that all the red I'm gonna cut it out of the same color of cardstock so there's other color shades of red that are on here and I'm going to go ahead and just pull all those down so now I know that every, I'm only going to have one sheet of red and everything that is going to be red on this layout will be out of the same red okay so I'm just going to color sync those and then we also have um, the purple background okay for the for that mat I want this purple down here in the rainbow to be the same purple and the purple in the heart here and up here in the rainbow up here I want those to be the same so I need to move all of these to the one color of purple so I know that now so you can see the changes okay and then I know that I'm gonna do this with all of these colors this is just a visual representation so, so I've taken all of those different colors and color sync so that now when I go to pick everything out and cut it it's you can really start seeing is this layout gonna work or the colors gonna work what am I gonna be using 
and you really get a feel for what your layout's going to look like. Okay. Now, uh, this black background, right, was the 12 by 12 two pieces of cardstock that we were going to pull for our background. We're not going to be cutting this with our Cricut, but I know that I, looking at this, my eye is telling me that this needs to be blue. So I'm going to move these two down to the blue. Okay, so this is what a representation of what my final layout is going to look like. Okay, just taking those elements, playing in design space, looking at, um, you know, sizing your images and just basic design principles of picking a theme, picking your photos, following through with, um, you know, your title and so forth. So I hope you guys found this helpful and I will, uh, I am actually making this layout and I will show you what it looks like actually put together. Okay, now here is my completed page that you saw me create in Design Space. And I picked colors that were similar to the colors that we color synced in Design Space. And then for this is the 12 by 12 background that we did not cut in Design Space. So make sure that when you go to cut your project, that you, um, you know, click the little eye on these two background pieces because you don't want it to come up and tell you that you cannot uh, cut it because it's too big for your mat. So you want to click off the two 12 by 12s, okay? So when it goes to cut, it's going to cut everything else except those two, all right? Now, I wanted to point out that this is a pattern paper that I used here. It may be hard to see. It's kind of a tone on tone yellow, but it's a stripe and it just adds a little extra to my layout uh, when you look at it. But then of course you can see the shimmery. This is the uh, Cricut um, Sparkle paper that I used there. And then also here on the gift box and the little extra little flare here on the side of the seven. And so it just adds that little extra sparkle and shine for a birthday layout. And then, of course, I took that same thing over here. And I you, I remember I moved that black piece for the arrow and co coordinated that so that it would also cut out in that shimmer sparkle. So I've got a little design element there going on. But anyway, so now you can see the completed page. I just have to get my photos printed and I will be ready to put this down and get it in the book and I'll do a little journaling over here about the party. I hope you guys got a lot of good information from this and I cannot wait to see what layouts that you create in Design Space. Mm -hmm.